Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pop Culture Cafe. I am Huck, and the adventure continues with all of these Alfred Hitchcock movies I've been plowing through, and uh, we've added another to the list. And it is Marnie, starring Sean Connery. Yeah, man, Sean Connery and Tippi Hedren. So, um, it was a, uh, an interesting film, so can't wait to talk about it. Stick around. All right, guys, now before I get started on my review for Marnie, if you're new to my channel, please do me a favor, hit like, subscribe, and smack that bell. Give it a once over. <laughs> once over anyway uh yeah look i i just love movies television shows pop culture all that good stuff on my channel i do box office breakdowns where we talk about the top 10 from the previous weekend go over all the number ones on your streaming services i do morning shows every tuesday uh trivia contests out and abouts blue hunts all that good stuff so if that's your jam please consider subscribing. All right, now, let us talk about Marnie. There it is, y'all. Marnie starring Sean Connery and Tippi Hedren. Um, you know, I, it's really funny because when you think Alfred Hitchcock, you just tend to think like Jimmy Stewart and, and like, and they're kind of like the, the, the tag team, you know, it's like, uh, the DiCaprio and Quentin Tarantino or, or Johnny Depp and Tim Burton, you know what I mean? It's like, like James Stewart and Hitchcock seem to be that, that, you know, that tag team back in the day. But this one's got Sean Connery and I just sort of love the fact in general that Sean Connery is in an Alfred Hitchcock movie. And look, so this is a uh, a good film, and he's stunning in this film. So it came out here. Let, let me let me pop it open for you. So Marnie came out uh, right after The Birds, and it came out in '64. So that is uh, definitely after the first James Bond film. So he had already been uh, starring as James Bond 007 at the time. And so in this film, he's got. Gosh, he's got such a presence, man. There's an opening scene where he's just sort of like leaning against the wall. I'm just going to say, nobody leans like a young Sean Connery. <laughs> you know, like seriously, like he's just in this bank leaning. I'm like, God, that guy just looks good leaning. Like he found like the perfect lean position. I'm like, I, I got to go work on my lean impressions, y'all. Got to get my lean game on. Anyway, um, so uh, once again, we have sort of a... Uh, a sticky situation with the female character. So I, I recently saw Vertigo, and there's sort of this sort of uh, dilemma that the main character, the female character, was put in in Vertigo. And in this one, she's not put into a dilemma more so than she just is in a dilemma. She's a little mental, you know. She's got this um, tendency to uh, steal, lie, cheat, has a real aversion for men. Uh, and you come to find out why she has that at the end of the film. Um, yeah, and, and so the, the whole premise is she's just stealing lots of money. And she, she basically works at banks, gets to get trusted, you know, so that she has keys to vaults and keys to, um, you know, safes and stuff like that. And then she makes her move when no one's around, opens the safe, steals the money, and then she's gone. Then she flees the, the, the area, and each time she's employed at those places, she tends to dye her hair, change her look a little bit because she's, uh, of course, a natural blonde. We all know by now Hitchcock loves those blondes. And um, so after she's done with her robberies and stuff, she goes back to blonde, lives her life a little bit. Uh, and then so when she shows up at Sean Connery's place, uh, there's already been word out that there's a woman you know, a former employee that stole from this other guy. Now, he is actually in, in talks with this guy. Like, they actually know each other because, you know, bank people know other bank people and they give each other loans and things like that. So they're kind of, they're already aware of each other. And this other guy sort of gave Connery the description of what that girl looked like. And so, lo and behold, she comes into his his place and wants employment. And he's sort of like, He's really studying her. He's, he's, a, he's a serious character observer. And so he's observing her character. And she starts to fit a couple of the profile descriptions that this other guy, Sidney Strutt, played by Martin Gable, uh, told him about. So uh, he hires her anyway, just out of sheer curiosity. Almost like my thought is he was hiring her so that he could eventually catch her doing what she did to his the other guy's bank, yeah. So, and of course, like, he kind of 
falls in love with her. This happens a lot in Hitch's films is people easily fall in love with each other. Rebecca, they fell in love super easy. Vertigo, they kind of fell in love a little bit kind of easily. I don't know. So like, I, I think that he, he gets to the love part quick so he can get to all the deception and, and really maximize that part of the film. So, yeah, so I don't think the falling in love stuff is always well-crafted. Sometimes I feel like it's disingenuine. Like, I kind of thought it was fake, but, you know, it was real. Like, Sean's kind of falling in love with this girl that I he kind of knows there's something up. Anyway, so that leads to something, as it always does. So, um, you know, again, like, it's a Hitchcock film. Don't want to give you too much. Just know that, like... She does, as you would predict, try to make a move uh, on the safe that's at Connery's place. And so it's just now a matter of how how is that going to play out? And then uh, what is the dynamic between the two of them? It's very weird, too, because, of course, like I said, he falls in love and wants to marry her and all that stuff. But she still has the aversion to men. So it's, it's uh, uh, again... A uncomfortable situation between the two of them. Like he kind of wants her. He just not not in in a in an aggressive attacker way, but he, he just physically wants her, and she physically doesn't want men. So that plays a huge role into their dynamic and how that all plays out and where it leads up to the end of the film. So uh, I think I'll just leave it there for you, so you can kind of explore that part of it yourself when you watch the film. Uh, I I enjoyed this film. I enjoy to see, okay, the end, I'm not telling you the end, do I like the end of the film? Yeah, yeah, I would say I, I like the end of this film. You know, it, it was a, a a nice journey to get there. Uh, some of it's very sad. It's it's a very, uh, not I don't want to say the, the movie's sad, but it has some very sad dramatic elements to it, but it also still has some of that great thriller uh, suspense stuff that Hitch is known for. So it's a, a, a nice, well-crafted film. I love seeing Sean Connery in this thing. It kind of makes me wish there was more, er, and I, maybe there is, but early Sean Connery performances that are amazing. So I'm going to have to look into his filmography to see if there's other earlier Sean Connery films that aren't in the 70s, like Zardoz, where he's wearing the red, you know, diaper and all that stuff. That stuff's weird. Uh, but I, I'm talking about this like 60s Connery man. He's just he's just so like uh, like at his game. Like again, like I can lean on a filing cabinet. I'm like, dang, look at that dude. So anyway, I, I gotta now try to find some earlier Connerys because he was just so good in this film. Like the whole time you you, you kind of see Bond and you're kind of waiting for him to do something Bondish, but he doesn't. He just. He's just really good. I see why, like, a couple of decades later, he wins the Academy Award for The Untouchables, because he just has great acting skills. So, the film also stars a couple of interesting co-stars. One is Alan Napier, who plays Sean Connery's dad in this film. And a lot of people may recognize this guy as Alfred the Butler from the old 1960s Batman TV show. Uh, he doesn't have his mustache or the glasses, but he does make for a really good uh, dad for Sean Connery in this film. And then also, uh, starring as his sister-in-law is Diane Baker, and she's quite good. Uh, it was a little weird at first because I sort of missed the fact that they said sister-in-law. I thought they said sister, and like she totally like, like is clearly like infatuated by him. I'm like... Okay, either there's a sick sister brother thing going on, or I miss something. And then, sure enough, like they said, sister in law a little bit later. I'm like, oh, whew, because that was weird. But she's very good, too, because she doesn't like the fact that uh, Tippy Hedren's uh, character, Marnie, has come into his life, because you could tell deep down she would just love it if Sean's character, Mark, would just come to her. That would be her preference. So that was a, an interesting dynamic tossed into this film as well. And there's some other interesting actors that sort of pop up here in co-starring roles, uh, notably one of which is Bruce Dern, who plays this guy in a flashback that is kind of the reason, sort of the springboard for why Marnie doesn't like men. So... That's kind of a bummer for Bruce Stern, but uh, yeah, it's a super young Bruce Stern in that part. 
All right, guys, that is going to do it. I think that's going to be uh, the end of my uh, reaction review here for the Alfred Hitchcock film, Marnie. I really enjoyed it. If you haven't had a chance to see this film, do yourselves a favor and check it out, especially just to check out the performance of Sean Connery. I think you guys are going to love it. All right, that is going to do it for now. Again, if you're new to my channel, please get on down there and hit like, subscribe, and smash that bell, and uh, you'll get notified the next time I do another one of these reviews. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time. I'll catch you later.